first things that you will need to know when you are doing a research project or a dissertation is the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. It might sound complicated, but it's really actually quite simple. And in this video, I'm going to reveal all. So stay tuned to learn more. And if you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton. I have worked as a university lecturer for many years and I've marked many, many research projects and dissertations. So I have a whole series of videos all about that. So if you are new here, make sure you do subscribe. And at the end, I will recommend some that I think will be perfect for you once you know what qualitative and quantitative research is. So let's get straight to it. What is it? What does it mean? When you are undertaking primary research, i.e. collecting your own data, you will need to decide how you will do this. Which research methods will you choose and why? Which research philosophy will you use? How will you conduct your research? There are lots of different ways that you can do this, but generally your research methods will fit into one of two categories. It will be qualitative or quantitative. But what does this mean? Well, put simply, qualitative research is all about words and meanings, and quantitative research is about numbers and statistics. But there is a little bit more to it than that, and I'm going to tell you about it now. So let's start with qualitative research. Qualitative research is not concerned with numbers. It's more about words and actions, and it's useful to answer questions such as how and why. Here are a few facts about qualitative research. As I said, it is not concerned with numbers. It emphasises words in the collection of rich and deep data. It focuses on depth, meaning and detail. The researcher essentially tries to get inside the minds of people and see things from their point of view. It involves gathering a lot of information about a small number of people rather than limited information about lots of people. The information is generally not presented in numerical form and it explores and tries to understand the meaning people give to social or human problems. It involves emerging questions and procedures and the data is usually collected in the participant's setting, often in natural settings, for example. The data analysis builds inductively from particular to general themes. And the researcher makes interpretations about this data and what it means. Qualitative research generally recognises the complexity of the thing that's being studied. And there are lots of reasons why you and many other people will choose to use qualitative research. So what are they? It is important that you study the advantages and the disadvantages of both types of data collection. And qualitative research can be great for certain types of studies, especially those that involve examining feelings or motivations, examining deep and complex issues, and searching for insights into an issue or concept. This is because qualitative data really allows you to dig deep into particular issues or concepts. It allows you to understand why things happen or how they occur and provides a much more flexible and fluid approach to research than is provided by quantitative data. But depending on what your research is, qualitative data might not be suitable for you. And here are some of the disadvantages. Sometimes qualitative research really isn't best for your project, so you do need to give this some thought. Some of the disadvantages of using qualitative research include that the sample sizes, i.e. the amount of people you're speaking to or the amount of data that you are collecting, are often limited. This means that the research can't be applied to large groups or whole populations. The volume of the data that you collect can be large, which can be really overwhelming. And the analysis can be quite complex and complicated. And this analysis and the collection can take quite a long time. So if you think that qualitative might be good for your study, exactly how do you collect this qualitative data? Well, there are different methods that use the qualitative approach. The most common are interviews, which can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured, focus groups, case studies, 
observation and netnography. And netnography is actually one of my favourite types of data collection and lots of people don't know what that is. So I have also made a video on that and I will link to that at the end. Okay, so maybe qualitative research is not best for your project and maybe you should take a look at quantitative data collection instead. So let's dig a bit deeper into quantitative, why it's good, why it's bad. Quantitative research is concerned with the collection and analysis of data in numeric form and it is perceived as being about the gathering of facts. Quantitative data allows us to test relationships between variables, make predictions and generalise results to wider populations. Some general facts about quantitative data include that it involves measuring and counting attributes. It involves answering how many type questions. It is interested in using formalised, standard, structured questioning, whereby response options are often predetermined. And it is administered to, generally, quite large numbers of people. So why might you choose quantitative data collection? Why is it good? Some of the advantages of using quantitative data include that it has a a structured approach and well-structured content and you can use a computer to help you to generate surveys and to analyze the data quite easily. There are programs such as Snap or SurveyMonkey that can do a lot for you. It allows you to collect lots of data and have a large sample size and because the sample size is big this data can often be generalized and applied to larger populations. But there are disadvantages too. Disadvantages include that quantitative data does require a certain level of familiarity with statistical methods. This could be basic descriptive statistics, calculating things such as mean, mode, standard deviation, percentages, or it could be more complicated statistical tests, such as inferential statistics. So if maths is not your strong point, you might not want to collect quantitative data. Quantitative data also does not provide an in-depth understanding of issues and concepts, and it definitely doesn't do well in answering questions such as how or why. So if you think quantitative data is for you, how do you collect this data? Well, the three most common methods of data collection using quantitative data is through questionnaires or surveys, scientific observations, and experiments. And if you can't decide which one you want to use, maybe you might want to look at a mixed methods approach. This is when you will choose more than one research method that includes qualitative and quantitative data collection. This can help to offset some of the disadvantages of both qualitative and quantitative data and it can help to make your research more reliable overall. However, you do need to consider how realistic it is to undertake multiple stages of data collection, given the time that you have and the resources that you have available to you. So ultimately, qualitative and quantitative data are very different, but they do suit different types of research project. And often the challenge is not understanding what it means, but deciding which is best for your project and why. And if you are at that stage, then you definitely want to learn more about how to structure your methodology and how to write that up for your research project. And I have linked to that video here, as well as the video on netnography, because I know you are intrigued about that one.